Of course, pause the video and give the question a try before listening on if you haven't done so yet. In part A, we need to determine the momentum of an electron whose total energy is equal to five times its rest energy. Now in this chapter, we have learned that rest energy is symbolized by E sub R, and then total energy is represented by E. So that initial statement that says total energy is equal to five times the rest energy, we could translate that into a simple equation. We could say that the total energy E is equal to five multiplied by the rest energy. Now, of course, we also know that the rest energy is equal to mc squared, and then we also have this equation that relates the total energy to the momentum as well as to the rest energy mc squared. So the trick is to combine all of these equations together. And we can do that first by noting that this E right here, that total energy, can be substituted with the expression 5 times E sub R. So we're going to fill that in for the total energy. We're going to make sure we square it. And then we come over here and we have momentum squared times speed of light squared plus, and then that term in parentheses, the MC squared, well, that's just the same thing as the rest energy. So we're going to actually fill in E sub R right there and then square it. And our goal is to find the momentum. So we actually want to solve this equation for P. And to do that, we may wish to square out the left side. So that's going to give us 25 E sub R squared. Over on the other side of the equation, we're going to square the other E sub R, and that just gives us E sub R squared. Now we have like terms on each side. It's the E sub R squared. So we would minus or subtract E sub R squared from both sides. On the left side, you're going to end up with just 24 E sub R squared. Remember, your goal is to isolate the momentum, which is P. So you'd next want to divide both sides of the equation by C squared. So that cancels out the C squareds on the right hand side. And now we can see that 24 E sub R squared over C squared is equal to the momentum squared. We don't quite have momentum yet, so of course we need to take the square root of both sides. And on the left side of the equation, we're going to end up with the square root of 24. When you square root E sub R squared, you're just going to get E sub R. And then in the denominator, when you square root C squared, you're just going to get C. And then the right side is the momentum. So this would be our expression that we're going to apply for both the electron and proton. So let's go now finally to part A. We're going to actually compute the momentum. And this is going to equal the square root of 24. Now, the rest energy gets a little tricky here. We know that the rest energy right here is equivalent to mc squared. So we would take the mass of the electron, and this is a value that you can look up in a reference tables, and then you're going to multiply that by the speed of light, another value that you can look up. Don't forget to square that. Now here's what's strange is when we multiply the mass times c squared, we would get the unit of energy in terms of joules. But this question likely requests the energy not in terms of joules, but in terms of mega electron volts. So we actually need to convert from joules into mega electron volts. And here's how we do that. First, we know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Next, we know that one mega electron volt is 10 to the power of six electron volts. So through that unit conversion, you would end up with an energy in terms of mega electron volts. An additionally weird aspect of this question is that we're supposed to be dividing this by the value of C, which is the speed of light, three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. But we're actually just going to leave this in terms of C because your homework system may want you to express the momentum in terms of mega electron volts per C, per speed of light. It's very, very strange, but this is likely how your homework system wants this. So the next thing to do is to pick up your calculator and to boldly plug all of this into it. You're going to do this very carefully. Don't forget to square your speed of light. And when you do that, you should end up with about 2.51 and now this is in mega electron volts 
divided by the speed of light. And this indeed would be the correct answer to part A. And now on to part B, which wants us to calculate the momentum for a proton. This will be very similar to what we just did with the electron. The key difference is going to be to change the mass. The mass of a proton is larger than the mass of an electron. And it turns out to be about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. So you can make that change to the mass. In addition, the homework system may want this not in terms of mega electron volts, but in terms of giga electron volts. Again, I know these units are very strange, but we can manage. And we can simply change this from one mega electron volt to one giga electron volt. We can do that as long as we change this 10 to the power of 6 to 10 to the power of 9. So in other words, a giga electron volt is a billion electron volts. So let's make those changes and see what the momentum for the proton is equal to. And when we punch that in very carefully, we should end up with about 4.60. And then this is giga electron volts divided by the speed of light, C. So that would be the correct answer to part B of this question.